Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another Archive 5. So, if you've seen one of these before, you know what to expect. Basically, it's five of my old unreleased videos, all wedged together, and then shared so that it sees the light of day for once. This is five tags. This is my All About Books edition. As usual, there are going to be timestamps on the screen and also in the description below so that you can skip directly to whatever you fancy seeing. And the five tags I'm going to be doing today are the TBR tag, the Big Books tag, the Old Books tag, the I Own Too Many Books tag, and of course, the ultimate Harry Potter tag. So yeah, I'm going to hand over to a slightly older, no slightly, well I guess it's, it's older in terms of time, but I was younger when I filmed it by a few months. Yeah, anyway, just here you go, here is, here is what I've just said you Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm taking the TBR tag. So I have a bunch of books as per. So as usual, there are a set of questions which I'm gonna answer, and then at the end, I'm gonna tag three people to take this tag. I'm not sure the original source for this tag. I do have a link, but I think it's somebody's blog rather than a booktuber. But I did see Harriet Rosie do this, and I thought, what the hell, I'm gonna steal it. So without further ado, let's answer some questions. Question one, how do you keep track of your TBR pile? Well, the simple answer to that is I don't, I guess. I do use Goodreads to catalogue all of my books and that sort of stuff, but at the same time, my shelves are kind of overflowing. I actually did a TBR tour video recently, which I will try to link to down below. Question number two, is your TBR mostly print or ebook? It is entirely print, I don't read ebooks, I'm afraid. No offense to people who do though. Question number three, how do you determine which book from your TBR to read next? So this is an interesting one because I kind of alternate. So I do uh, a series book and then a non-series book, except by a series book, I also include stuff that isn't part of a series, but is by an author that I've already read. So for example, Stephen King. Stephen King counts as a series book, even though it's not necessarily a series. Other than that, I just pretty much pick and choose what I feel. I normally have my next book queued up in advance. And then, yeah, I just, sort of follow that pattern of alternating to try and cover as much of my TBR as possible. Question number four, a book that's been on your TBR the longest. So for this, I looked this up on Goodreads, it's Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King. And I think I shelved this in like 2011 or something, so it's been on there for a good sort of seven years now. And I do intend to read this soon. Basically what I've been doing recently with Stephen King is I've been picking the longest ones that I have in my collection. Every time I go on holiday, I'll spend some time away. So this is probably my next longest one. That um, Next time I go away, I'll probably take this. Question number five, a book you recently added to your TBR. So for this one, I'm going for Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Now I picked this up because I've seen Irish reader, Kevin, and Alyssa from Books and Paperbacks. They're both huge fans of this book. And obviously the movie's coming out soon as well. I actually picked this up because they both did trailer reactions to the movie. And having seen how much they love it, I was like, I have to get this book. You know, anytime anybody loves a book this much, it's gotta be worth reading, right? Question number six. A book in your TBR strictly because of its beautiful cover. I don't really have one like that. I don't tend to buy books based on covers. I actually do have a few with beautiful covers, but like the most beautiful cover on my TBR pile at the moment was one that was sent to me without me asking for it. So <laughs> question number seven, a book on your TBR that you never plan on reading. Now, theoretically, I do want to read all of the books on my TBR. That's why they're still on there and why I haven't unhauled them. However, the one I'm least likely to actually pick up and read is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. And the only reason really is just that it's long and it's quite small print. And there are other classics on my TBR list that I would pick up ahead of this. Question number eight, an unpublished book on your TBR that you're excited for. I have the physical book still because I have the pre-order, but this doesn't come out until I think April. Something like that, and this is A Murder to Die For by Stephen Colgan, which is, it seems, I think it's like a, yeah, it's a black comedy set in an English village, and it, I guess it's a kind of quirky take on detective novels, which is cool, because that's what my book is as well. Sorry if there's jingling in the footage, the cat is playing with his toy. A Murder to Die For, check this one out, Stephen Colgan, nice chap. Question number nine, a book on your TBR that basically everybody's read but you. Marcus Zusak, The Book Thief. Do I need to say any more than that? I actually only recently bought it from a charity shop and I'm looking forward to getting started. Question number 10, a book on your TBR that everyone recommends to you. 
So for this, I've gone for Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I wouldn't say everyone recommends this to me, and they don't recommend it specifically to me, but again, this is another one that I bought after watching somebody gush about it on BookTube, and that was uh, what Cass read. So check out her review of this if you haven't already. That's what made me want to buy it. Question number 11, a book on your TBR that you're dying to read. I don't know if there are any that I'm dying to read. I did have an answer for this when I was prepping it, and I have since read that, <laughs> and that was this one. Dust Ship Glory by Elaine M. Will, and this is a graphic novel, but it's also non-fiction. And she sent this to me because she did a talk at one of my writers' workshops years ago, and I've been kind of watching her career. However, I read it. I did love it. Five out of five, by the way. But instead of that, I'm going to go with Dune by Frank Herbert, specifically because I'm going to be doing a buddy reads of this with Graham Quigley and uh, Mindy's book journey. So the three of us are going to be reading this. We're going to be reading it in January and posting reviews at the start of February. So that's kind of why I'm dying to read it, because I just want to get started. But equally, I want to wait until January when we officially start doing the read-along. Question number 12. How many books are on your Goodreads TBR shelf? I'm going to find out. So TBR is currently reading, and I have 145 books on that. But on to read, which is want to read, so it's books that I want but I don't own, there are 2,114. And then just for the record, 1,213 on my red shelves. So yeah. So anyway, that's it. That's the TBR tag. I'm going to tag three people, and those people are Todd the Librarian, Kit Kats Can Read, and Book Axe. And Scott and Lucy, if you both want to do it, that's fine. Do it together. Why not? So there we go. That is the TBR tag. Thanks a lot, as always, for watching. Don't forget to let me know what you think of each of these books in the comments. Hit the subscribe button if you want more bookish videos when I can talk a little bit louder without worrying about getting noise complaints. And I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the big books tag. So this was created by One Book, One Review, and the rules are pretty simple. You have to collect seven big books and talk about them, but specifically you get the five biggest books from your red pile, and then your two biggest books from your TBR pile. So I'm going to introduce you to those books, and then I'm going to tag three people to do this after me. Here are my seven books. Oh my god, they don't even go into shot. There we go. These are my seven books. So disclaimer before I get started, I have a lot of books and I found it kind of difficult to tell which were the biggest books, especially because I guess the rules are kind of loose. I mean, do you go for the number of pages? Do you go for like how dense it is, the number of words, the actual physical size of the book? So I've kind of picked a little cross section um, to see what we got. So screw it, we'll start this one first. So this is a bind up of Graham Greene novels. So it's got The Heart of the Matter, Stamble Train, A Burnt Out Case, The Third Man, The Quiet American, Loser Takes All, and The Power and the Glory in this. So this is a pretty big book. It's basically seven books in one. And as you can see, the print is absolutely tiny as well. See the last page number and this is only, only 856. But I have actually read this and it took a long time. I mean, and I'd even, I got to skip certain novels because I'd already read them elsewhere. So it's quite a beast. It's also um, got a lot of, this is wax on the side from my candles. Whoops. And these are from my red pile, by the way. I'll do my tubby red pile next. Book number two from my red pile. So this is George R.R. R. Martin, A Dance with Dragons. Again, because it's a hardback, it adds kind of a lot of density to it. So the last page number on this is 1013. Still is a very lovely copy and also the print's a bit bigger in this one. This one's a paperback and this is It by Stephen King. Now this one is, and again in paperback form as well, it is 1100. And 15 pages this one you probably already know what it's about basically an evil comes up in the town of Derry every 27 years and it follows this group of kids both as they confront it in their childhood and then when they go back to confront it again as adults so obviously if I'm mentioning it by Stephen King the other one and again I read this one this year as well and that's the stand and this is the uh, what's the uh, what's it called it's the um, the full complete one it's like Stephen King's cut of it isn't it so yeah, this version of the stand is an expansion of the original novel, but it's kind of the definitive version of the stand. And this one is a whopping 1,325 pages long, so definitely one of my longer ones. This is also Stephen King's longest book. This is 480,000 odd words, and it is about 440,000. Again, awesome book. 
It's almost like a post-apocalyptic, I don't know what you'd call it, it's almost like survival horror, I guess. Just, just read the stand if you haven't already, don't let the size put you off. And the last one, and this is another one I read this year, almost dropped it, and this is The Divine Comedy by Dante. And my cut version, this is only 740 pages, but it's still a bit of a beast. Again, I'm sure I probably do have other books that are longer than this in page numbers, but I just, to be honest, I would have been here for days on end trying to figure out which ones were which. This is obviously Dante's classic tale of, you know, what happens in hell, basically. The greatest poem of the European Middle Ages. So those are my five big red ones. And then these are two from my TBR. So let's start again with another Stephen King, because I'm trying to work through the back catalogue. This is Four Past Midnight. And I believe this is a collection of stories. Yeah, four heart-stopping accounts. This is 930 in paperback, so it's not as long as some of the other ones, but it's still a bit of a beast, and I haven't started it partly because of that. I think I also saw Missy from Binge Reader get this the other day as well. And then the other one that's on my TBR that's a big one, that's uh, Carol Ann Duffy and Gillian Clark, The Map and the Clock. And this is a big old poetry collection, and it is about 700 pages long. But this one isn't as dense as some of the others, because by its nature, because it's poetry, there's not as much to the pages. What am I doing with my hand? Why am I doing this? <laughs> yes, Caroline Duffy, you will give me your poetic secrets. Okay, so these are my two biggest ones from my TBR pile at the moment. So yeah! These are my seven books. Let's see if I can stack them while talking. Oh god, it's getting too heavy to carry with one hand. Oh, oh. I'm going to tag three people to take this tag as well. So I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Missy from Binge Reader, Graham Quigley as well. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought, etc, etc. And I will see you soon for another video. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the old books tag. So I have a stack of books of varying ages, and I'm going to answer a few questions. So this was created by Books and Pieces, and I'll leave a link below to the video on their channel. I think I just saw it and decided to pinch it, so sorry about that, but hopefully you enjoy what I did with it. There are seven questions here, and then I'm going to tag three more people to take the tag. So without further ado, Let's get to the questions. Question number one. Have you ever bought a book that was made before you were born? So the physical book and not the text. And I have plenty of these because I like to buy secondhand books. So at random I just picked out Arthur Whaley. And this is Chinese poems that he was a noted translator. So these are all poems he translated from Chinese. And as you can see, it's an old little hardback. This volume was produced in 1949 for sale to its members only by Reader's Union. It's beautiful. I love these old books. That's kind of why I wanted to do this tag. Question number two. Which book on your shelves takes place in the oldest time period? I wasn't sure what to go with this one. And in the end, I've gone for A.C. Crispin, The Paradise Snare. Because this is a Star Wars book, and as we all know, that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. This is the first in, I think, a trilogy of books about a young Han Solo. But unfortunately, when Disney bought the rights to Star Wars, they declared all of the books, like all of the Expanded Universe books, non-canon. Which means this didn't actually officially happen anymore. Question number three. Have you got a book that was originally published in the same year that you were born? I do. My mother got me this one. This is a chronicle of the year 1989. Dane, these are all things that happened the special year you were born. Love mummy, XXX. I've just realised, presumably, this was actually, I, I'm incorrect, this was actually first published in 1990 because obviously they needed to know how 1989 finished. But I'm sure I do have another book that was published in 89. I just don't know which one off the top of my head. So this is going to have to do. Question four. Which book on your shelves have you had the longest? This is probably Dinosaur Adventure by a guy called Tom Mosey. And basically, yeah, the star of this book is Dane Bygrave. That was my name before I changed it. With love from Grandma and Granddad, 1992. And this is one of those personalised books. So I've had this, I guess, since I was three. And uh, any books before this one haven't just haven't survived the passage of time. Question number five. Which book have you had the longest but never read? Okay, so I looked on Goodreads for this and apparently my answer is Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King. Which I've had since 2011, I think, and I haven't read it yet. So, 
it's not that bad. It's only six, seven years that I've had that book. And I do plan to get on with it soon as well. Probably my next holiday, I'm gonna take this one with me. Question number six. What's the oldest book you own? I have no idea, because I have like 1,100 books. So the oldest book that I think I own is actually my answer for the next question. So I'm going for this one instead, because it's the second oldest, I guess, <laughs> or one of, the, one of the oldest. And this is Intentions by Oscar Wilde. And it's got uh, somebody's writing inside. A.G. Grimwade, Greencock, April 1944. And this was actually published 1934 as well. And the final question, which book do you have that was written the longest time ago? And that, for me, I believe is this, which is Journal of the Plague, or as I know it, Journal of the Plague Year by Daniel Defoe. And uh, my copy of this as well is from 1913, which also makes it one of my oldest books. So there you have it. Those are my answers to the old books tag. I love gathering books like these. And I do go out of my way to get them when I can, especially when some of them are really cheap in like charity shops and stuff. One day maybe I'll have a whole book shelf that's just all books like this that I've read. But for now, I will continue to alphabetize by author surname. And on that note, it's time for me to tag three people. So I tag Todd the Librarian, Madman Reads and Rocks and Book Axe. So there you have it. That's the old books tag. I'm going to go and eat this Chinese food now before it goes and gets cold. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like or a comment, etc. Especially if you've read any of these fairly obscure books, I guess. And I will see you soon for another video. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the I have too many books tag. As you can see, I have too many books right now for me to even hold them up. How am I going to get a screenshot? Yeah, we're here to do the I have too many books tag. Let's go. So this tag was created by Becca, the book reviewer, and I believe there's some footage of me doing this from several years ago. I don't know. We'll insert it here if there is. Um, now, oh, oh, i tell you what that is. Oh, I can't remember who wrote it. All my books are alphabetized by surname. I mean, this is only one of about eight bookcases. There are 10 questions to this tag, and then I'm going to tag three people to take it after me. And so without further ado, let's start on the tag. Question one. The book you've owned for the longest. The book that I've owned for the longest, so this isn't the oldest book that I own, it's just the one that's been in my possession for the longest, is Chronicle of the Year 1989. And I have this because I was born in 1989 and so my mom got it for me when I was very little as something that, you know, I could keep hold of as I grew up and look back on. And it's even got a little thing in the cover. To Dane, these are all things that happened the special year you were born. Love mummy. Question number two, the book you've owned for the longest and haven't read yet. So for this one, I had to look on my Goodreads because I wasn't sure in terms of the timing of when I got these. Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King. And this is a short story collection. I have kind of started reading it. You can see how far I got in. Um, I put it down not because I wasn't enjoying it, but just because there's so much to it. And I put this on my TBR shelves on April the 12th, 2013. So it's coming up for five years I've had this and not got around to reading it yet. So I should probably do that soon. L let me know with a comment if you think I should. Question number three, that book that you hate and you totally should have gotten rid of it by now, but you haven't. For me, this is Rosie Rinkstar by Janet Rosina West. And this is one, I mentioned this in a video recently as well. I got sent this very early days in my uh, book reviewing career when I just launched my blog. And I was basically just accepting every book that people offered to send me. And this is awful. It's about ice skating. Rosie and Sergei set off on their journey to realize their dreams of skating success. They face tests and qualifiers, success and failure. They meet new friends and Rosie has to face up to the devastation that can be caused by a jealous rival. Question number four, a book that someone pressured you into getting but you just don't want to read it. So for this one, I picked up just Palm Sunday by Kurt Vonnegut. Basically, I have a bunch of Kurt Vonnegut books because a friend of mine kind of kept buying me them or kept on insisting that I bought them. And I have read one or two of Kurt Vonnegut's books and they're good enough. It's just I have no immediate rush to get to them. Question five, a book on your TBR that you want to read next. So this is one that arrived in the post recently and this is A Murder to Die For by Stephen Colgan. So Stephen Colgan is a writer friend of mine. He's based here in Buckinghamshire, UK, like I am. 
And uh, yeah, this is his new book. It's not actually published until next year, but I pledged to support it through Unbound, the publisher. So basically I get a pre-release copy and my name in the credits of the book and all this stuff. So I want to hurry up and get to this one soon because I'm excited. Question number six. That book that you brought at the bookstore that one time, but haven't read yet. I'll be honest, I don't often actually buy books from bookstores. I get them from charity shops quite often, but that's my entire collection. One that I did recently get from a bookstore, sort of. It wasn't even a bookstore, it was the gift shop at the Tate Liverpool. But it's the closest I've got. And that is Desire by Haruki Murakami. And this is a really beautiful little vintage minis collection. It's only, what, 100 odd pages or so, something like that. And it only cost me about three pounds. And it's very pretty. I bought it that one time in Liverpool, but I haven't read it yet. Question number seven. That book that you spent all your money on at that bookstore. Again, because I don't really go to bookstores, and when I do buy books, they tend to be pretty cheap, like a pound or something. For you Americans, what, two dollars a book maximum, something like that I end up paying. However, because I felt pressed for an answer, and because it's not quite a tag video unless I do some self-promo, I've picked out Subject, Verb, Object, an anthology of new writing. And now this is an anthology that I edited and brought together and all that stuff. And the reason I picked this one is because basically, I, I mean, every time I publish a book, I lose money on the printing costs and the marketing and the editing costs and all this stuff. This particular book, I also ordered a copy, a print run of 50 copies and then three of the authors dropped out. So those 50 copies then are unsellable. I actually sent them out to bloggers and I wasn't even supposed to do that. So basically, by the time that this actually went into people's hands, I was down a good thousand dollars plus <laughs> on the production costs. So I would say I spent a lot of money on it. Question number eight, the prettiest book you own. Now this is a bit of a controversial choice, I guess, because it's not pretty in, you know, booktube standards of all these beautiful books and whatnot, but it is very pretty in its own way. And this is Tom Phillips, A Human. And this is a treated Victorian novel, and I'll try to show you. Basically, Tom Phillips took this Victorian novel and then painted over the top of it. So as you can see here, these little gaps there in the paintings are the words. So he's kind of used the original words of this Victorian novel, created artwork over the top of it and it still reads like a poem. It actually inspired me. I created something similar myself using uh, a little canvas and some um, uh, oil pastels. I'll link to a video below I did actually where I talked about making this and that thing over there. Question number nine, the ugly hoe on your bookshelf, the ugliest book you own. All right, this one's got a story behind it, but actually this one also popped straight into my head. So this is, what's it even called? Exotic Neurotic by Kenneth Jarrett Singleton. Can you see this thing? And the dimensions of this book? And then look inside. Look at the poems inside. The fuck? Right, so this is an indie book by this man. I want you to get a good look at this man's face. So, yeah, this is an indie book, and this is one of the reasons why I stopped accepting indie books. Not because of the awful cover art. Uh, this actually had uh, plenty of awful poetry inside as well, so I gave it a bad review. Relatively bad. I think I gave it two or three stars. I didn't give it a one star, and I also tried to be constructive with it. And basically, this chap, Kenneth Singleton, went off on one on online, and he started using a bunch of uh, fake names on Amazon to leave negative one star reviews on my books that just attack my personality. Basically being like, don't read this book, he's a tosser, and all this stuff on the books that I've published. Question number 10, optional, show us all your books. No chance, because I have a lot of books. However, I have filmed a TBR shelves tour that will probably already be out by the time this tag goes up. So again, I'll try to remember to link that in the description. Let me know if I ever forget to link things in the description, by the way, because I do it a lot. Basically, the reason I'm not going to show you all my books is because I have a lot of books. So I did this TBR thing as a kind of tester, you know, to see whether people are interested. And if people do want me to do a full tour of all of my books, I will do that. It will just take time because I have slightly over 1,200, I think, at the last count. So yeah. And so that's it for this tag. So now it's time for me to tag three people to take this. And I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Catalyst Reads, and I'm going to tag Brunette Bibliophile. 
So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment to let me know if you've done this tag, what answers you gave, whether you'll be checking any of these books out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more bookish videos. I'm basically doing them pretty much once a day at the moment because I'm filming so much stuff and really enjoying it. Really appreciate all your support. Thanks a lot again and I will see you soon. Bye bye. Hi folks, today we're going to do the ultimate Harry Potter tag, which was created by Isabeau's Literary Musings, which I will link to the original video below. There are a lot of Harry Potter questions. I have a lot of Harry Potter-ish books. And I'm wearing me Gryffindor hoodie, even though apparently I'm a Slytherin, so we... Before I do the questions, just a reminder, I will tag some people at the end, but also you could just totally cheat and look in the description down below. And uh, yeah, right, let's go. Question one. Oh, there is, we're split into sections. So we've got general questions. Question one, favorite book. I always say this is probably my favorite from the series. So this is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, book number three. I just really like how it deals with time travel and stuff. It's super cool. Least favorite book. Half-Blood Prince, I just didn't enjoy this book very much. I felt like it was all, it all felt very Lord of the Ringsy and that it was just filler and like history and whatnot without anything else much happening. Apart from the odd occasional scene with characters I didn't particularly like. So, <laughs> question number three, favourite movie. We've been watching these recently, and so on the basis of that, I'm going to go for Goblet of Fire. Possibly just because it's the last one that we watched, but also because David Tennant. Question four, least favourite movie. Probably the first movie, Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone, if you're American. Just because all the actors were too young in it, really. It's, you know, you could tell that they were kids that were trying their best to act, but couldn't really act. <laughs> Question five, favorite quote. D I mean, nothing actually springs to mind immediately as a quote. I'm sure Dumbledore said a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna say my favorite quote is enemies of the air, beware, because I'm Slytherin now. Characters, favorite Weasley. I always thought Bill Weasley was pretty cool, but actually, haven't thought about it. I think I'm gonna go for Arthur Weasley, just because he's like, you know what I mean? I kind of wish that Arthur Weasley was my dad, just because he's, he's kind of inept, but in a charming way. Question seven, favorite female character? That, without a doubt, has got to be Luna Lovegood. Who doesn't love Luna Lovegood? Question number eight, favorite villain? Probably Lucius Malfoy, because I quite like Lucius Malfoy. He, he makes me laugh in, in a way that, you know, it, I just laugh at his cruelty. I find it hilarious. My Slytherin roots are really coming out in this video, aren't they? By the way, I'll, I'll link below, if I remember, to the video where I took my my um, Hogwarts sorting hat test and found out that I'm a Slytherin, because that's a thing now. Question number nine, favorite male character? Well, my first thought was Lupin. I just think Lupin's quite cool. And uh, again, he seems, you know, I think if, I, if, if I'd been second year or whatever, when he was teaching, third year, I think um, he would have probably been my favorite teacher. Assuming that I can't go for Lupin, I would, it would depend on the subject as much as the professor as to whether I actually like them or not. I mean, Dumbledore's a professor, so we'll go Professor Dumbledore because, you know, Dumbledore's a boss. All right, these are would you rather questions. Question 11, would you rather wash Snape's hair or spend a day listening to Lockhart rant about himself? I think I'd spend the day listening to Lockhart rant about himself just because like washing Snape's hair would be a bit intimate. You know, I can sit on a chair and, you know, read a book or something while Lock Lockhart's banging on. I don't have to- it doesn't say anything about paying attention to him. Question 12. Would you rather duel A, an elated Bellatrix, or B, an angry Molly? <laughs> I'm gonna say an angry Molly just because also I think that sounds like a cocktail name. Bellatrix would just kill you as soon as look at you, whereas even angry Molly would just- bop you around the head a bit and shout at you. Question 13, would you rather travel to Hogwarts via the Hogwarts Express or a flying car? Based on how the flying car drive went, I'm gonna say the Hogwarts Express because, you know, I'd be happy just sat on one of the, one of the, uh, I'd get um, one of the little rooms to bump to myself and I'd sit there with my chocolate frogs reading a book. Question 14, would you rather kiss Voldemort or give Umbridge a bubble bath? Again, I'd kiss Voldemort because I don't want to be giving people bubble baths. I mean, who has picked Umbridge? I mean, Voldemort's a bit of a beaut as well. Plus, he has no nose, so he can get right up close to the lips. 
Question 15. Would you rather ride a hippogriff or ride a firebolt? I'd rather ride a firebolt because I always thought that, you know, brooms look fun. Plus you can't play Quidditch on a hippogriff. I'm pretty sure that's against the rules. I don't know. Let me look, let me look this up. Does this say anything about riding? All right, this is the book to movie adaptation part. Question 16. Is there a character which you felt differently about in the movies versus the books? Probably Snape because, I mean, I like Alan Rickman. <laughs> and watching the movies recently, it has been incredibly amusing to watch Snape's put downs and just the looks that he gives to people. Like, I really like Snape in the movies and in the books, understandably. He's a bit of a, you know, sweaty little toe rag. And also head of my house because I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> Question 17. Is there a movie you preferred instead of the book? There are movies that I prefer more than the books, but I still like the books. I thought Chamber of Secrets was done very well as a movie because it was quite dark and the the hissing of the basilisk and all the parcel tongue genuinely creeped me out. Still scares me now when I'm 28. Richard Harris or Michael Gambon as Dumbledore? To get this right, Richard Harris is the one who died, right? I'm going to say Michael Gambon anyway, just because I think he was the one who did, was in the most films. So, you know, in my head, Dumbledore is like neither of those people, so... Question number 19. Your top thing, person or event, which wasn't included in the movie that annoyed you most? I can't say I was annoyed by anything. I kind of understand their reasons for, for cutting people and whatnot. But I did in my uh, five facts about Harry Potter video, which again, I'll link to if I remember. There was um, a fact in there that uh, Rick Mayle had played the part of Peeves the Poltergeist in some of the... I don't. I think it was just rehearsals, I don't know if they filmed it. But he never made the final movie and I think Rick Mayle as Peeves would have been very interesting, so we'll go for that. Question 20. If you could remake any of the Potter movies, which would it be? I'm not even sure if I've seen them all, that's kind of why I'm re-watching them. But I guess I'd remake the first one just because, again, the acting was kind of crappy. Which amazes me as well because like you watch like something like Stranger Things and the kids are like the same age as, as the Harry Potter kids But they're much better actors. I don't know if that's just because like today's kids are superhuman and they're coming to wreak havoc and doom upon us all or not Okay, these questions are about Hogwarts question 21 which house was your first gut feeling you'd be a part of? So when I was reading the books, I always kind of identified with Gryffindor because obviously they're portrayed as the heroes. But I do think Ravenclaw would make more sense because I have book smarts. I read a lot. I'm also a writer. And I mean, I'm good at maths as well. So <laughs> um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like any of the other houses. So yeah, so I, I kind of thought I'd be Ravenclaw. This leads on to the next question. Question 22. Which house were you actually sorted into on Pottermore? Or another online sorting quiz because obviously we don't want to promote any individual brands here um i was sorted into slytherin and again you can watch a video of that happening on my channel i don't know how i feel about that still question 23 which class would be your favorite i always thought like doing hexes and jinxes and stuff like that was pretty cool question 24 which spell do you think would be most useful to learn I have spent the last 10 years trying to get the Accio spell to work. In the same way that before that, I tried to use the Force all the time. Just because how convenient would that be? That'd be amazing. Question 25. Which character do you think at Hogwarts you'd instantly become best friends with? Millicent Bulstrode. That's a name, isn't it? I just wouldn't have any friends. Okay, these questions are miscellaneous ones. Question 26. If you could own one of the three Hallows, which would it be? Invisibility cloak, easy. Question 27. Is there any aspect of the books you'd want to change? This can be a character, an event, anything. Do you know what I would do? I would take out the really ridiculous Hogwarts song in the first book, which I have no idea why that was included. You know, the Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy Warty, Hogwarts, teach us something, please. Nobody wants that. Nobody needed that. Question number 28. Favourite Marauder? Well, I've already cited Lupin as my answer earlier, um, but also obviously Sirius Black's cool. I think I'm going to stick with Lupin. Lupin is cool. Question number 29. If you could bring one character back to life, which would it be? Well, I'm a Slytherin, so Voldemort. Question number 30. Hallows or Horcruxes? Hallows, I guess. I mean, I don't really fancy splitting my soul up into little parts, you know. I do that every time I release a new book. They're all my Horcruxes. Well, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think of my answers, etc. I'm doing this as well in case I forgot to take a thumbnail, I don't know. I also need to tag three people to take this next. 
So I'm going to tag Kit Kats Can Read, Randomly Bookish Gina. I'm going to tag Kevin, who is also known as Irish Reader. Are any of you guys Slytherins, or is it just me? Am I the only person who's a Slytherin? Actually, my girlfriend's a Slytherin. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.